Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Our mild and dry weather about to change as a new round of rain settles in for several hours. Duck. Is it a booster dose or a third dose? And how big is that dose supposed to be? I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, I'm clearing up confusion about booster shots, including whether getting one could affect your results on a COVID test. They're for sale on the most popular websites, but tonight, Help Me Hank has a new urgent warning about fake COVID vaccine cards. Off the top at six, selling fake cards, nothing new. We've reported on it, but something scammers are doing now is a game changer. That's right. So they no longer just want your money. They want much more, and it's yeah. causing massive problems for victims. Consumer investigator Hank Winchester live tonight. Hank, this scheme is it evolved, I guess you can say. And Kimberly, right now, those high tech thieves, they're after your personal information. Now, this is a real COVID-19 vaccine card. This is mine. The fakes look very similar. But what these scammers are doing on Facebook and Instagram, even TikTok, they're offering you an option to pay extra, and they claim they'll load you into the federal database. That is simply not true. They're out there right now for sale. Fake COVID-19 vaccination cards, $200. And they're being sold on popular sites like Facebook and Instagram. Really, at one point or another, we've seen something going on on any one of the platforms that probably shouldn't be. Consumers are increasingly beginning to identify the platforms with being a part of this, whether they are or not. We, we choose to call them enablers, but... I think consumers are beginning to see them as being part of the problem. This is not happening on the dark web. Again, popular websites, and that's exactly what scammers want to do. Get your attention, make you feel like this is comfortable and legit. But understand, if you buy one of these cards, you could be in serious trouble. It's a hefto penalty and it's a crime. You see over and over again how many people have been uh, arrested either for selling these cards or using these cards. And here's the new twist. These scammers not only want the $200, they want your personal information because now they've upped the game. They're stealing your identity. Short of giving people your social security number, everything they want, which can then easily be able to access your social security number, is name, address, gender, and date of birth. Federal investigators are working to track these high tech thieves down. They've been in contact with the team at Facebook. But as you likely know, uh, many of these scammers are overseas. And once one gets taken down, unfortunately, another starts up another operation trying to get your attention, your money and your personal information. Now we're live here tonight. Hank Winchester, help me. Hank. Yeah. OK, Hank, thank you. We got a taste of sunshine today. I yeah, hope you enjoyed those few minutes because here comes another <laughs> round of rain. Hi, Andrew's here with a look at uh, the timing on what's on the way, Andrew. And Kimberly and Devin, as you allude to, more than a taste, especially this morning. I hope you checked out the brilliant, vivid orange sunrise that we had earlier. And right now, it looks pretty calm and peaceful. And it is. 58 degrees right now. No rain falling as of yet. A little breezy with winds out of the east at around 13 miles per hour, but rain is right on our doorstep trying to cross the Ohio border. But so far the air is so dry raindrops not hitting the ground just yet here in southeast Michigan, but it is hitting the ground in parts of Indiana and Ohio. You can see all this rain activity here down towards Cincinnati It is going to march northward and be on top of us as we go through this evening, but especially later on tonight. Currently we have temperatures in the 50s in your neighborhood as well. As you can see on the computer models, we'll see a few scattered sprinkles and raindrops between 7 and 9 p.m. and up until about midnight, but that steadier, heavier rain starts to move in while we sleep and for tomorrow morning. I'll go over rain totals and your full Friday and weekend forecasts in a few minutes. But in the meantime, take the time now, get on your mobile device and download the local forecasters app. It is essential rain or shine. It is faster, easier. It puts weather in the palm of your hand, especially when you're on the go. The local forecasters app search WDIV in your app store. Earlier this month, the financial calendar flipped to the fourth quarter, and now the all-important third quarter auto results are in. They are once again down considerably because of the computer chip shortage. But as Local 4 Business Editor Rob Maloney reports, there is actually a silver lining. A lot of Metro Detroiters have wondered what's to become of the Palace property. Well, now that the Palace is gone, the land has become a holding pen for General Motors. This is where they're putting their trucks that they've built 
without the proper computer chips. And this is just one of a large number of lots all around the country. There's another one just like this off of I-75 up in Mount Morris. The auto industry knows to expect headwinds at any time, and the past year has been exceptionally tough navigating the dramatic production and profit losses the chip shortage brought us. Let's look at the reported numbers. GM's revenue, or cash in the door, was just under $27 billion, down 40% from a year ago. The profit off of that was $2.5 billion. Ford's revenue down 25% at just under $36 billion. Profit earned just under $2 billion. Now, Stellantis absorbed Fiat Chrysler in the past year, and it reports a little bit differently. It said it brought in just over $37 billion in North America, $18.2 billion, which is down 16% from last year. More disconcerting is its admission that it's lost 30% of its production year to year. Guidehouse Insights auto analyst Sam Abel Summit has some encouraging news. It appears that we, we may have uh, bottomed out and, and started to move upwards, you know, again, based on uh, the, the re reduction in inventories of unfinished vehicles. Ford telling Wall Street it's cut that number in half. They've done a, a reasonably good job. Uh, you know, they've managed to get through this without losing many, you know, billions of dollars. Now, he was talking about the whole industry at the back end there, about them managing to not lose billions, but you as a car buyer know that we're paying record high new car prices and even record higher used car prices. So that's causing the problem. And if you're looking for an affordable car, well, good luck with that, but that, those are the adjustments the car makers had to make. So Back right, so we, we would hope that the industry is learning a lesson in all this, Rod. Well, guess, Devin, I mean, think about it. You know, years and years ago, they had to learn just in time manufacturing. Now they're learning that they have to diversify their supply chain around the globe yeah. because whether it's a fire or a tsunami or a typhoon or a hurricane, you can't count on one place and a small number of companies to give you the parts that you so desperately need. In a world so intricately wound. Exactly right. All right, Rod. All right, President Biden is scaling back his social spending and climate change plan in an attempt to secure a deal with Democrats. The plan has been stalled in Congress because of disagreements between moderate and progressive Democrats. The $1.75 trillion proposal is down from $3.5 trillion. It includes money for child care, universal pre-K, expanded health care coverage, and investments to curb climate change. It no longer includes progressive priorities such as free community college, expanded Medicare coverage for dental and vision, and paid family and medical leave. No one got everything they wanted, including me. But that's what compromise is. That's consensus. The bill would be paid for with new taxes on millionaires and billionaires, a minimum corporate tax, and increased enforcement of existing tax laws. So far, neither the moderate holdouts nor progressives have given a firm commitment on it. All Republicans, though, oppose the president's plan. Coming up on NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt, a deep dive into what this spending bill means for you and your family. That's at 630, immediately following this broadcast. So is it a booster dose or is it really a third dose? And how big is that dose supposed to be? The whole booster shot situation has got a little complicated over the past couple of weeks. Dr. Frank Me George here to answer some of your booster questions that have been coming in through clickondetroit.com. Doc? Yeah, Devin. So a viewer named Ruma asks, I'm planning to get my booster this Sunday and travel to Canada by car on November 4th. That means I have to take the COVID test on the 2nd. Will the booster shot affect the test? So Ruma, the answer is no, you don't have to worry. None of the vaccines will cause a COVID test to become positive. Now here are more of your questions. A viewer asks, a pharmacist told my daughter that since she and her family all had COVID-19 last December, they were safe from getting it again for two years. Is that true? Simply put, we don't know precisely. While we do believe having been infected provides some immunity, it appears to vary from person to person in how effective it is and how long it lasts. Suggesting a safety range of two years is complete speculation, which is why getting vaccinated is still recommended. Ellen writes, if I had the J&J &J vaccine and want to have a Moderna boost, will I get the full dose or the half-dosed Moderna booster? Seems like I should get the full dose. People who received the single-dose J&J &J vaccine are eligible for a booster shot of any of the three vaccines two months after their J&J &J dose. If you choose to get Moderna as your booster, you will receive the half-dose because that's the designated booster dose.
And Jasmine asks, is there actually different dosing for a third dose and for a booster shot, or are all third shots the same dosage just with different names? The terms third dose versus booster dose do have different meanings when we're talking about the two dose mRNA vaccines. A third dose is given to supplement the initial response in immune compromised people, and it's given 28 days after the second dose. A booster dose is given to extend protection that's decreased over time in those with normal immune function. For the mRNA vaccines, it's given at least six months after completing the initial series. In the case of Moderna, a third dose is a full dose, while the booster is a half dose. Now, another point that was recently clarified by the CDC is that immune-compromised people who receive a third dose should also potentially receive a fourth booster dose. That would be six months after completing the third dose. Now, again, that is because they often are not getting the same level of response to the vaccine as others who are not immunocompromised. Back to you. We've got our, our vaccine cards where I think we're going to need a bingo card here the way this is going to keep up with all these different changes in advice. All right, Doc. All right, there will uh, soon be new life at a hotel and conference center that has sat empty for a while. Crane's Detroit Business reports the former Hyatt Regency Hotel in Dearborn is sold to a new owner. Crane's says Rhodium Capital Advisors, a Manhattan-based real estate company, bought the hotel from the U.S. Marshals Service for an undisclosed price. It will convert the hotel into an apartment complex with a renovated restaurant and banquet space. Still ahead, the Spartans Wolverines rivalry comes to Capitol Hill. We've had some shenanigans with two <laughs> Michigan Congresswomen. We'll see what they've been up to as we count down to Saturday's big game coming up. And here's Jamie. The World Series now shifts to Atlanta, and one local accomplished teenager will be there, not just in the stands, but on the field as well. Why? I'll tell you next on Local 4. 